Hello everyone, this is a quick video on how to use RootCode with Requesty and some of the Spark frameworks. Um, maybe not as quick because we actually want to build something, but let me walk you through the integration. So if you download RootCode for the first time, you'll see a big screen here and it says Express Setup to Requesty. So you'll be redirected, you can just authorize RootCode and you'll be redirected back. And what's happened now is that you create an account and you have a request the API key that is in the settings. You can see your balance right here, which is great for teams, by the way, if you have colleagues, you can just make one account and let them authorize with their authorized email from the company and basically start using Rootcode straight away. Now, in the configuration profile, you can choose your models. You can choose between all of the different models. You can also choose, do we want reasoning, yes or no? Do you want to use a custom temperature, yes or no? So you can also make different profiles. So I can you know, adjust this and say Claude 4. Uh, I can make another one where I say Gemini, and let's say 2.5 Pro, and let's use the latest one. And we can do, sorry, that was correct. Let's put it back to the Cloud 4 Sonnet. Okay, now let's make a new one and say Gemini 2.5 Pro and we're gonna add 2.5 Pro there we go and we're gonna save that okay now I can switch between both of my profiles uh, very quickly which you can also do here by the way uh, which should help you now another thing I really like about Rucode is the different modes so you can edit your modes right here uh, let me actually use the one from Roof, really important, very famous Spark uh, modes. And I can just copy paste this and have it here. And you can see now I have the different modes. Now, very cool. I created a little project, um, basically playing Connect4 uh, with Request E, so through OpenAI, I think. Yes, OpenAI GPT 4.1. So basically we're playing um, Connect4, let me see. Let me go here, uh, connect four against an AI. So pretty cool. Um, you can you know play around with it uh, using the requesty versus AI SDK. Now let's go to Rootcode and say, we want to auto prove basically, let's say everything for now. Uh, and we want to say, please look at my connect four project and make it 10 X better. Uh, start minimally, I want to see Go straight away. Let's try this out. We will change modes late, later, but let's just do the auto coder for now. So, what's going to happen now? It's going to start coding. Um, it's going to look at my plans. It's going to look at my files, uh, and we can see that it's already reading a lot of things. Now, very cool. What's very interesting in in requests is that you can see live logs. So you can see the log the logs going in straight straight away. Now, there's also a professional view if you want to see the actual. Uh, inputs uh, and logs, which is very cool. Then we have the normal log view, which you can see here, which actually also shows you the amount of percent of the tokens that we're able to cache, which is pretty cool. Now you see we're already at 95.3 percent, which should sh should save you a lot of money. Um, so this is one of the biggest reasons people start using requests because we were able to cache a lot of tokens for you. Now while um, Rootcode is doing a bunch of things, which I love, is just going straight away, making file edits, and just you know being independent without me doing anything. Um, so for that, I can go to the analytics. Analytics is very important. It gives you an overview of how much am I spending on tools like Rootcode, but also, for example, my Connect4 game. Uh, and what's pretty cool is that you can directly here group by mode. So you've seen the different modes that we've created, and you can see, okay, how much I'm actually, actually spending by mode. So you can see the code mode, 96 cents, Spark, Eight, but the spec pseudocode is actually writing specs and I'm spending 62 cents. So a lot of my money I'm actually spending on writing um, specifications, which is qu quite interesting. Uh, an additional feature of request is that you can go to the model library and search for all your, your favorite models, but you can also uh, filter. So you could say, I want to see Algama models. I want to see XAI models, for example, and you can filter by those. Uh, then you can filter by geolocation, where are these models hosted, uh, what's their data retention policy, was it used for trading or not. And very, something very interesting is that afterwards, once you have find your models, 
you as an admin can select these models and you can approve them. Uh, once they're approved, anyone in your organization can only use these approved models, which is very, very important. Um, now, another part that we allow with those approved models, they would basically come here. Um, I could do it, but then maybe it will break who code. So <laughs> let's wait for that while it's still doing a lot of things, uh, a lot of problems we see, but you know, uh, 33 cent and still going so that's very good what we've also added is guardrails so basically while you're coding while you do a bunch of things you might have uh, leaked some information you know by accident you were in the wrong folder or some secret keys uh, or some other things so if you enable them we will automatically basically remove them for you um, which is another very cool feature so let's go back to the live logs and see what's going on okay three cents six cents let me see the caching. Caching is still going really well. So, okay, very cool. Now, what does it say? NPM run dev. Okay, let's try it out. Let's see what Rucode has done. Wow, has this changed the UI, which is pretty cool. I can change the AI difficulty. I can do a new game. I can be an expert. Uh, I could, let's do expert uh, and let's do this. And let's see what's going on. Oof, it put it on too. Okay, you see, this is a pretty cool game that is done basically autonomously over the past couple of minutes while I was checking out request uh, and you know I cost $1.62 I think I did things before that but this shows you a bit of the power of how you can use WooCode with request -y. one other thing you can do which is very very interesting is when you go to your different modes uh, and you have autocoder here you can basically switch models so the benefit of having request -y is that you can use all of these different models for the different um, modes that you have like writing blogs like writing uh, code writing docs and so on so hopefully this helps you and uh, better understanding and how to use requesty with WooCode.